rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Crossroads Podcast. Um, thank you for all your support, uh, watching all the uh, episodes we've posted so far. Today we do have with us Rashid Madani. You probably remember him from the first episode. He's taken some time out for his time. Inshallah, we do have a, a very important topic, which is very important for every Muslim to know about. And inshallah, today we'll be discussing Toba, repentance. Assalamualaikum, Rashid Bhai. How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How are you, how are you uh, doing now with the lockdown and the current situation? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you know, the family is fine. And obviously, you know, people, you are, you are just doing, uh, you keep on hoping and praying that uh, it is a last you know, much longer. We've got some good news today. I mean, like, people, there's a positive message because you know, message is going around about how, you know, the percentage of people affected on a daily basis is decreasing. But, I mean, the person who sent it me was from Pakistan, Pakistan, and he said something about um, it's come down to 5% or something, the amount of people affected on a daily basis. Like, he was explaining how it got to 13% of the increasing rate. But anyway, it's coming down, so hopefully... You know, just keeps on coming back to, uh, you know, the soon that will be tribulation. Take, take. And uh, how, how are you spending your time yourself? How, uh, I know you're doing uh, daily talks um, at six o'clock. So, inshallah, what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below so everyone can tune into that as well. But uh, other than that, how are you spending your time? Well, still coming to the masjid, I mean, like, you know, the imam's allowed to come, so... Uh, still coming five five times to the masjid. In between the namaz is at home reading, you know, with the kids. Uh, so yeah, you know, some just good quality time with the kids and the family. Reading. Sure. So, Alhamdulillah, I'm still coming out, you know, with the inside. So, Rashabai, let's get uh, stuck into this. Uh, I know you straight after this, you're doing another talk. So, what I want to talk about is in regards to Tawbah repentance. Like it's something that we should always familiar ourselves with. We should regularly do Tawbah. Um, so I was hoping you can talk about this and discuss this and talk about the fact that what, what tends to happen is people will do a sin. They regret the sin. They do Tawbah from that sin. And they fall into the sin again. And then when they fall into that sin again, they think to themselves, you know what? The, you know, they discussed it with the self and, you know, how can I get forgiveness again? Because I've already done that sin, I've already done Tawbah, I'm doing that sin again. And it's kind of like a vicious cycle, even if the second, third time they do do Tawbah from that sin, but they keep falling into it. Um, if you could just explain to us what is Tawbah and if this does occur, then what is the solution to this? Yeah, mashallah, Tawbah is a, it's a, it's a fantastic subject because Tawbah, like literally, uh, it means uh, to, to turn back, to return. So it's like, uh, I mean, even, uh, it's quite interesting that I was reading this uh, Christian article. Um, well, it was, I don't think it was a whole article, but it was just explaining the word repent you know, in English. And uh, the, the writer of this particular um, article, he'd written that, you know, repent, it, if you follow it back to its roots, whether the Greek or Latin, I can't exactly remember, but it meant, repenting means to turn around. It means to turn around. And he went on to say, so it's like, you know, you're going in the wrong direction and you're turning around, you're taking a 180 degree eastern or a U-turn and you're turning back. The interesting thing is that if that's what repent means, you know, if we trace it back to its roots, the English word repent, that's, uh, or it, you know, even if that's one opinion, that repent means to turn around. Well, in Arabic, tawba means ruju, which means to turn around as well. So the the word uh, repent and the word uh, in English and Arabic respectively they've got like the exact same you know uh, definition which is turning around are you turning your life around if you look at um, uh, the the conditions you know, Toba is basically reconciling and connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't it? it's disconnecting from your sins it's disconnecting from your nafs and basically that's the entire purpose of life so Toba is the ultimate purpose you know of life and you can never stop doing Toba because even the Holy Prophet said that I, I do Toba 
try to istighfar 70 times a day and even though we know that he was flawless he was uh, sinless and uh, you know impossible for them to commit sins but they still uh, perform you know toba uh, out of humility they would always you know, consider they have not worshiped allah taala enough and so uh, they just constantly do more uh, if you look at the, the actual you know the, the linguistic definition of toba is to return to come back taking a u turn changing you know uh, so you're going in the direction of sin to come back away from the away from the sin if you look at the conditions of toba you know generally the ulama say that uh, there are three conditions one is for you to regret this sin in the past or regret number two is stop the sin in the present time and three is that you're going to return to that sin but you regret stop and determination to avoid it are those are three conditions which are very important uh, if someone doesn't obviously be each of those but even amongst those three the main one is uh, if you want to classify the uh, uh, like one narration is another mutawba uh, repentance is uh, regret so the main source of focus of repentance is regret it's feeling you know and sort of pain feeling uncomfortable um, you know when you've done something wrong feeling ashamed of it basically feeling ashamed is the soul is the is the, is the center of of what um toba is but definitely and it's something interesting i was reading that you know the salah salihin have written when you do toba when you ask allah taala for forgiveness even though it's okay for you to just dive in and say ya allah forgive me you know that's okay but usually the salihin what they used to do they even split Uh, the act of doing toba into three parts like when you're asking allah taala for forgiveness they said the first part is sana which is praise allah taala first and then the second is it there are uh, confession confess your sins and the third part is istighfar they ask him for forgiveness so even when if you look at how if, if anyone's wondering you know when you speak to allah taala and you do toba what should we do should we just say allah forgive me which is perfectly fine but uh, adab is praise him first call him out by his pure names uh, his asmaul husna uh, and secondly then confess to me all that this is what i've done this is what, even though he knows already but in just add to the humility confessing so sort of helps a person to get into that uh, state of humility and then the third thing is asking forgiveness so that's that interesting to uh, keep in mind as well to the praise and then confess and then ask for forgiveness but if someone didn't follow that order and just went straight into you know at the end of the day uh, toba is mainly you saying you're like i'm sorry for what happened i'm sorry in whatever use or whatever words or whatever language sort of connects with your heart and makes you feel uh hum- and makes you feel like ashamed of what you've done uh, if that's sorry in the english you can just you know keep on repeating that you're like i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry that's what istighfar is um do you want me to answer that uh, the question uh, you said about going back to sin yeah it, yeah as as a cycle like you said you've done a sin you do toba and then you end up going back into that sin so when you've done your toba you do have sincere intention to stop doing a sin but eventually you give in whatever the situation is but eventually you end up doing that sin again and it turns into a cycle and then sometimes what happens is the individual himself thinks you know like it's this is a joke I'm, I'm how can i do toba from something which i end up doing it when i end up doing the sin again even if they don't have intention to do the sin again in the future you know in the dust that's great because you know, even that even if someone is done toba imam zali teaches on this and he talks about why he gives about six or seven reasons i think you know, about about six reasons why people don't do toba and one of the reasons is exactly when Zali discusses many people don't do not do toba because they don't trust themselves they think well, what's the point of me repenting i know i'm not going to be able to stay firm on it so they don't repent in the first place so the fact that you said you know if someone's like he here's the thing you know when you uh, if you've repented from a sin you've committed that sin and you repent it means allah taala has erased that sin Uh, and if if your repentance is sincere and you really intend not to do it again now if you for example the next day fall into it again i mean the good thing the positive thing is that that past one has been erased 
now you've only got this present one to deal with. So let's say, for example, uh, you passed away after doing it again. Well, because you do, you've committed the sin twice, okay, uh, after the first one, he did Tawbah, so that's when he raised. And after the second one, he, okay, let's say he didn't do Tawbah, he died. He's going to meet Allah Ta'ala with one sin in his book of deeds. Whereas if he hadn't done Tawbah, he would have had two sins. So even if someone's persistent, he's committed the same sin uh, 70 times. Today's his 71st time. You know, after every one, every time he does Tawbah, as soon as he's done Tawbah, the previous sin has been erased, so the previous 70 have been erased. So don't, uh, you know, even though he's done, he's committing it again now, he's only got one in his book of deeds. So don't not do Tawbah, because you think you're going to go back into the sin again. Uh, that's one answer Imam Zadi gives. Um, uh, there's at least three answers he gives to that question. One is, uh, you know, it's better if you've committed the sin 71 times, and but you haven't done Tawbah, and then you die after the 71st time, but you're going to meet Allah Ta'ala with 71 sins. If you've committed the sin 71 times, but you've done Tawbah after every one, and let's say you haven't done it after the 71st time, well, you're going to meet Allah Ta'ala with just one sin, that, that particular sin. Uh, there's only one in the book of these because you repented for the previous one, then you erased all the previous one. Another answer he gives is that, look, uh, uh, it's possible that you might even pass away before getting, you know, do Toba now, or whatever you've done in the past, have all that erased. Don't worry, you might fall into the sin again tomorrow, you might not be alive by then. Uh, and the third answer, he gives this, uh, well, he, he doesn't give this, but another scholar gives this answer. When you, um, when we're actually thinking to ourselves, I don't think it's possible for me to avoid a guna, a sin. Indirectly, we sort of saying that Allah Ta'ala can't save me uh, from that sin. So in like attributing like inability to Allah Ta'ala. If you look at the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, He can make you steadfast. Uh, at any part of Toba. For example, like, there's a story Imam Ghazali mentioned that there was a Shaykh who repented like 70 times from one particular thing, and after every time he used to go back to it, but it was the 71st time that then he succeeded in like totally abandoning that sin. And you know, even the number 70, it comes in a hadith, there's a hadith in Abu Dawood. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated that whoever repents from a sin, uh, He's not considered a persistent sinner, even if he uh, repeats the sin 70 times in one day. So that statement of the Prophet Ali that uh, even if someone commits a sin 70 times in one day, but he's repented after every time, he's not considered a uh, persistent sinner. Uh, I, because he's repented every time, it's gone every time. But if he, as compared to someone committing a sin 70 times in one day and not repenting, when he's persistent, he's got 70 sins, you know. Uh, yeah, so these are like three of the answers that um, okay. have that okay. question. See, so what he's saying is that if you sin, you should do Tawbah because you don't know when death's going to come to you, number one. So at least you've converted that sin into a I believe it is yeah, into a deed. Whereas if you've sinned a hundred times and you've not done Toba after a single one, not only, even if you 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 think to yourself, oh, I'm not doing Toba properly, or I'm not, I'll just end up into the same sin again. What you technically believe, what technically you're believing is that Allah can't save you from this sin. Yeah. So yeah. if you ever you so take 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 and take, like that's a very good point you mentioned because it's the tricks of shaitan aren't they? You do a sin, oh I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm not going to get forgiven. I do the same thing again. But um, what technically he's saying is, so what we need to rely on is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and always go back to the mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Exactly, yeah, that's a strong point there. You know, it's when you look at uh, your own ability and because of your own past, you uh, your own habit. When you look at your habit, you feel like you can't break the cycle. You feel like you're obsessed with the sin. You're addicted and it's impossible. It feels like 
you know, you can't live without that thing. Mm. But if you look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, you know, for him to, uh, you know, Allah ta'ala in the past has, by his mercy, he's, he's converted, he's transformed non-Muslims to not just Muslims in one day, but into saints, you know, one day. So if you look at the mercy of Allah ta'ala, you know, anything's possible for him. And then there's that famous story of, you know, uh, of the Holy Prophet, uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told that famous story of the man who killed, you know, 99 people, 100 people, uh, such a murder. But even Allah Ta'ala accepted his Tawbah when he was sincerely repent- repentant. So yeah, definitely don't despair in the mercy of mercy. Allah Ta'ala. Don't just look at your own inability and your own weakness and your own, and you're being stuck in that uh, habit loop and that addiction or obsession with that sin. Look at the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, nothing is impossible. For him to pull us out of that uh, sure. pit of sin, or that quicksand, that's, you know, uh, there's no mushabkat there for Allah. So yeah, look at the mercy of Allah Ta'ala, that is the gist of that point. Ding, ding. And uh, just going off the back of that, if this is the case, an individual is sinning, uh, he, sorry, he's repenting, he falls into the cycle of sin, repents, is there something where you can recommend that an individual do? Um, so he's doing tawbah for a sin, but he wants to avoid getting out, wants to get out of this sin. Was that was something that he should do? Any acts he can do, or any anything that he should do in order to seek the mercy of Allah to pr- stop him from sinning that put sin in the first place. Well, repentance. I mean, the only there's nothing necessary for him to say for repentance, like. One of the Messiah of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said that even if you if you committed a sin and you felt ashamed of it, Allah will forgive you. Allah Ta'ala will forgive you even before you've said, Oh Allah, I ask you for forgiveness. So Tee. even saying, Yeah, please forgive me is not a condition for Tawbah. So that's the interesting thing that Tawbah is a is an emotion of the heart. Tawbah, Tee. if we define Tawbah as being feeling ashamed of what you've done, shame is a, a, an emotion of the heart. So really Tawbah itself doesn't require anything but we should you know as far as when we, when we when you talk about recommendations mm-hmm. saying astaghfirullah doing the zikr of allah ta'ala uh, and saying ya allah please forgive me i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry uh you know that's crucial but then again the trick of the shaitan is he doesn't even he he wants to distract us and he doesn't even let us do zikr even saying i'm sorry yeah, Allah, I'm sorry. It's very easy, but he he just distracted with so many other things like entertainment or amusement or the dunya things that we won't even we we'll forget about this. So there's one thing I would say a really strong thing, especially in this state where we're surrounded, engulfed with like, distractions from the shaitan and this materialistic distraction. Very good to be part of an organization, a part of a network. And by network, I mean like just a group of friends, uh, a network of like-minded people, you know, who are focused on Toba. And if you're involved with that organization or network. Rashabai? Rashabai, we're asking in regards to an individual, he sins, he does Toba, he sins, he does Toba, and he's in this cycle of sinning toba, sinning toba. Is there any advice that you can give to such an individual in regards to any acts of worship or anything that he can uh, busy himself in to stop himself from doing yeah. this sin completely? Yeah, it's always, um, I mean, it's, uh, as far as the toba is concerned itself, toba doesn't require to say anything because toba, we've already said that the definition of toba is being feel, feeling ashamed. And feeling ashamed is an emotion. So you don't have to, I mean, saying I'm sorry is brilliant and it gains a lot of sawab and we should say it from the tongue. But even if someone doesn't say I'm sorry, Ya Allah, but he's feeling that in his heart, Allah Ta'ala will forgive him. So Toba in itself is really an emotion. Even the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that uh, if someone feels ashamed after committing a sin, Allah Ta'ala forgives him. Even before he said, Astaghfirullah. Um, but it definitely like... Uh, uh, saying with our tongue, Astaghfirullah, uh, it definitely helps to create and you know strengthen and fortify that intention inside the heart as well. Uh, but one thing that is really useful, you know, being part of an organization, being part of a network, and what I mean by that is, you know, when you're part of a friend circle, like even your group, 
having you know, like a YouTube channel and having your uh, subscribers and, and that's a network, that's an organization. And a good thing about that is you're always getting reminders when you're part of a network, you're part of a safety net, you're getting reminded even if you're weak and you're falling short, you're forgetful, you've got someone to remind you. You know, uh, a grant is important that that network or that organization, that group of friends is religious. You know, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also encouraged you being with around people, friends who, um, uh, if you've forgotten Allah ta'ala, they remind you. If you're already remembering Allah ta'ala, then they strengthen and they help you to remember Him more. So, really, in this day and age, where there's so many distractions, so many things pulling us away from. Uh, zikr from istighfar, from the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. Even though saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Allah, is very simple, but there's so many things that can become hard when you're not even thinking about it, and shaitan can distract you from it. So with so many distractions, it's good to have reminders, and being a part, part of a friend circle, a network, can really remind you to, you know, keep on doing toba, uh, keep on doing the zikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So I'd say, like, having a, being part of a network, a network and organization is very, or a group of friends, very, uh, very important today. And in regards to, um, I don't know how I've read this, but is there a nation, oh, sorry, a narration along the lines of, um, if we did, if the humankind didn't sin, then Allah will replace them with people who do sin and do talk about something along those lines? We didn't hear the hadith. Um, um, and it's an interesting one. Uh, it's one that comes to be misunderstood as well. Okay. So it's very important to understand. Um, it's in Muslim Sharif. Uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that uh, if you didn't sin, then Allah Ta'ala would replace you with a nation that did sin. And they would ask Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness and Allah Ta'ala would forgive them. It's important to understand that. Uh, it's an interesting hadith that um, the, the misunderstanding. The way that that can be misunderstood, someone could take that to mean, you know, when it's important for us to sin, that, you know, my sinning is a good thing. Now, that's a really grave mistake to make because as soon as you start thinking sins are good, that's actually intensifying the, um, you know, the severity of the sin. Um, or tries to justify it, actually makes, uh, you know, the sin a thousand times worse as compared to if you committed a sin and then actually felt uh, remorse for it. So, uh, number one is that we shouldn't take this hadith to mean it's okay and um, uh, sins are insignificant or it's necessary for us to sin. So, therefore, uh, sins are not a big deal, which is, you know, the outward impression that someone can get from it. And the real meaning of this hadith is quite interesting that um, because we uh, human beings and this whole universe is a manifestation of the the zat and the names and the sifa, the attributes and the self and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so one of the names of Allah ta'ala is Wafur, the forgiver. Another one is a Tawwab, the acceptor of repentance. And another one of the Asma'i, Ilahi, the names of Allah is Halim, you know, the patient one, the one who doesn't punish uh, instantly. So this dunya and the creation are manifestations of the names of Allah Ta'ala. So he created this dunya. Uh, it's the, the infinite wisdom, the hikmat of Allah Ta'ala to actually uh, reveal the, uh, the reflection. This dunya is like a reflection uh, for his names. So the name of a fool, so his forgiveness can only manifest and uh, or, or he decided to make his his name of a fool, uh, the forgiver, shine and manifest in this dunya uh, by forgiving people and that can only happen if there are sinners to forgive. Uh, so if there were no sinners at all, you know, his name of a fool would not manifest. Uh, so that's what the hadith means. Uh, it, it, it shouldn't be taken uh, in the meaning of, uh, well, I'm deliberately going to sin now, and sin is not a big issue, and it's important for me to sin for the name of, for the attributes of Allah, to, for the attribute forgiver, 
to uh, manifest, and that's not what we should take from it. What it means that uh, we must try to avoid ourselves, try our best to avoid the sin. But when someone does uh, sin despite his best abilities, when Allah Ta'ala wants uh, people to know what forgiveness is, and what Hilm, Halim, his patient, when someone sins, he doesn't um, punish them instantly. So we see the Hilm of Allah Ta'ala as well. When you see sinners around us, but they're living fancy lives. Well, that's the hill, that's the suburb of Allah Ta'ala manifesting. You know, there's a hadith, interesting hadith that says, no one is more patient than Allah Ta'ala. Because people uh, insult him and make blasphemous statements on a daily basis. But he doesn't, uh, you know, he gives them respite, he gives them time to repent. So the fact that the sin is walking around with people, he, he, you know, people who don't even believe him, uh, but Allah Ta'ala is giving them a chance to repent. And that's his sifat of Halim. Uh, Halim means the patient one, the tolerant one. And Sabur, which means the one with Sabur, the patient one. That's those attributes of Allah Ta'ala manifesting. So that's the wisdom behind the hadith. It's quite deep if you look at it. The hadith is, um, and for the common people, it can be taken out of context. And it can make people... I uh, think that sins are insignificant and they're not necessary to avoid or to commit sins. It's not a big deal, which is the total wrong meaning of that, uh, the wrong interpretation of that hadith. But if you look at the real interpretation, it's like, well, the the, uh, the existence of sin on this earth allows for the attribute of Allah Ta'ala of forgiveness okay. to be shown and for people to recognize that attribute. So, um, yeah. Take no uh, 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 That's a very good. Um, it gives you good insight on the hadith because you're right. It's it's sometimes it can fall into all right. Like people can think, oh, we're designed to sin, but more no that hadith's more to do with al- the one of the ninety nine names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala m- manifesting itself. That's it. Yeah. Take take take. So yeah. yeah I get as, that. As, as being even though sinning is something. Yeah. Uh, saying that we're designed to sin, or um, I mean, uh, we have we must all, you know, try our best to abstain from the sin in the first place and not, not sort of use this hadith as an excuse or say we're designed to sin, so therefore, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. Take, take, take. So, what you're saying is, no matter how much you try mm-hmm. and you still uh, you try to avoid it, but you still fall into it, then. Uh, and just repent and then Allah Ta'ala will accept that repentance that's his sifat of Tawab the accept of repentance you know uh, coming into into uh, manifestation Jazakallah for that and uh, in regards to uh, Imam Bazurgs of the past um, mm. what how how, imp- how like in regards to um, how should I requ- uh, phrase the question how much importance do the do the scholars, the ulama, the bazurgs of the deen pay and say regarding toba, repentance? Right. I mean, it seems like when you read the books, it seems like if this is the most important subject. Okay. Okay. Their, their, their speeches, their lectures, the books ultimately come back to toba. Right. Because if we define toba as connecting with Allah Ta'ala and even like, like even the bazurgs, uh, like Toba can have different levels, can't mm. it? So even the ones who don't sin and they're constantly debated, they do Toba as well, mm. which makes mm. a person think, you know, well, what sin have they committed? Yeah, that they do Toba from exactly. because yeah. they're not committed sins. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, a normal person, uh, a person a warm would do Toba from from sins, and then you'll have a high, you know, the awliya who are not committing sins, but they think Toba, they like, might be doing repentance from some sin that they committed 20 years ago, mm-hmm. that uh, they still feel ashamed of. Or it's possible that, because they're always engrossed in the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala, even when they forget Allah Ta'ala, if they ever do, for a short time, uh, they consider that to be a sin as well, even though it isn't. Well, sometimes, you know, even like the elite, the khawas, the khawas, the khawas, the elite, 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 the el
uh, from because they no matter how much they worship, they always think that they haven't worshipped Allah Taala enough, and that itself is a sin in their eyes, not worshiping Allah Taala enough, even though they'll be reading a thousand nakat a day. So they'll be, you know, they'll still consider themselves as falling short of what they should be doing, even though they bow down to fifty times more than ours, and they're in the state of humility, they'll be uh, considering that a sin as well. So. Um, Yeah, and, and as far as you know, how much emphasis do they give? This is, you know, and even the glorious Quran. Most of the glorious Quran is about the zum, uh, the condemnation of the dunya and not falling, not being deluded by the dunya, not being entrapped by the dunya, and not being engulfed by the uh, attractions of the dunya. That's what the main content of the glorious Quran is: condemnation of the dunya and. Uh, you know, uh, calling towards the afterlife, and that's what Tawbah is. So, if you should look at it roughly, you can see out of the 6,666 ayat of the Quran, about like about 500, you know, mostly about 500 of them are to do with actual rulings, you know, actual masai, like halal and haram. And the others are either about, you know, stories of the past nations or refuting false uh, beliefs. Uh, or uh, talking about how we should contemplate about the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and create condemnation of this dunya and uh, contemplation about the afterlife. So it's very, very important. Toba is something like the Holy Prophet is some, you know, did this for 70 times every day. So it's something that should be a constant, necessary part of our lives. This far and saying I'm sorry, Ya Allah, should be a compulsory part of our daily schedules. No matter how, no matter how, yeah. No matter how, I'm just gonna say, sorry, I'm just gonna say, no matter how praised someone thinks they are, no matter how long they think they've been worshiping, no matter how uh, much you about that they or in the house, there's always some toba to this. The toba is not just from uh, missing namaz or drinking alcohol or coming in zina. You know, toba is from arrogance as well, it's from vanity, it's from feeling jealous. Toba should be from uh, suspecting people, from backbiting. Uh, from being greedy for fame and fortune, uh, Toba should be for uh, you know. And I know these are all things that only a person, an individual himself knows. They may not manifest. He knows in his heart if he's suspecting someone, uh, or if he's got even negative assumptions about someone. That he should be Toba from that. You know, um, being arrogant. Only he knows if he's arrogant or not. So he should be Toba for that. So it's something that, uh, in fact, scholars should do more because arrogance is jealousy. And things of the heart, sort of, shaitan attacks you know, scholars and all them are even more with those kind of things. So Toba is just a constant thing every day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, for for someone to say, uh, I mean, if he doesn't remember, yeah. um, it, it won't be necessary. It may not be necessary for him to do toba, but to be on the precautious side, yeah. uh, he should. Uh, it, it is it is important because obviously, uh, I mean, I, to be honest, I'd say it is necessary because we do a uh, person can uh, generally commit many sins and not remember them all. So that is, you know, highly recommended that he just says, "Allah, forgive me for all the sins that I don't even remember," because there's a good chance that there are a lot of them. The voice went. Um, so what I was saying is that the, just to finish off briefly on this, is very easy for the common person to remember what good deeds they do, and forget their sins, but. It, it should be the opposite way around. Like you mentioned, there was a buzzer there for yeah. twenty. They might be talking, uh, you know, doing toba from yeah. something years ago. But uh, um, why? Why is that the case? Yeah, so sometimes the buzzer even do toba from a sin they committed when they were children. Hanaki, you don't even have to do toba from that because when you're a child, you, you can't commit a sin. Yeah. But they'll just be in this higher state of, you know, this elite state of you know connection with Allah Taala that they will be they'll regret even doing something like that with their kids. But anyway, you know, to answer your question, 
in the same way between human nature, like if the nafs is into arrogance and jealousy and vanity, you know, uh, self-conceit, uh, which is like just thinking you're special and thinking you're better than other people. Uh, the Qur'an part uh, says that, um, you know, it describes uh, the humans as being uh, ungrateful, ungrateful, you know. Uh, we remember the calamities that before us, but we forget all the blessings that Allah, Allah bestows upon us. So it comes down to the nafs, uh, you know, forgetting our sins. Uh, right. like it, uh, you know, you talk about forgetting sins, this, uh, can I just read this? Uh, the right of really interesting um, uh, statement about forgetting sins and remembering um, good deeds. And there's this uh, there's a hadith that says uh, there are four signs of good fortune. Uh, number one, the forgetting of previous sins. Uh, and number two, remembering previous virtues. Uh, number three, looking at people better than you in materialistic things. And number four, is looking at, looking at people worse than you in, uh, in religious matters. And the hadith then goes on to say, well, uh, four signs. These are four signs of ill fortune. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said that there's four signs of good fortune, which is the opposite of these. Uh, remembering your previous sins, forgetting your previous virtues, looking at those less than you in materialistic things, and looking at those better than you in religious matters. Uh, so that's actually in the hadith as well. Um, these things. So it comes down to the nafs, just wanting. The nafs is quite arrogant in nature. The nafs is in nature our basic selves. Uh, in, you know, the jealousy. And uh, the nafs is naturally inclined towards evil. Yeah. It's Ammaratun Bisu. The Quran says it just naturally commands evil. It's naturally inclined towards evil. Uh, even the, the angels have intellect, but they don't have enough. Animals have enough, but they don't have intellect. We have both. Um, so depending on if our uh, intellects overcome our enough, we, we ascend to the level of the angels. If, if our enough is overwhelmed and overcome our upper, then we descend to the level of the animals. It's the enough that's making us remember our uh, um, good things. And forget all bad things. All right, all right. But Jello, we'll finish off on that. I do know you've not got long now till six o'clock until uh, you I do your that. normal show. I'm sorry for taking up your, uh, a lot of your time. I'm surprised uh, we have gone that far. I didn't expect it to go that long. But thank you very much for your time. I'm not going to take any further time of yours. Uh, of yours. And inshallah, uh, hopefully, we'll get to do this again. Inshallah, definitely. for. Uh uh, and giving me the opportunity to talk and uh, and love you the and protect you, protect your family and you know, this silsila that you started. Um, um, the channel and everything you do me and that other success in the side. Please pray for me as well. Mm, I'll be here, uh, pray for ourselves as well, inshallah. I'll let you go now, inshallah. Asalaamu alaikum and uh, we'll see you and uh, speak to you soon, inshallah.